three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you joining us this morning. If you're with us on Facebook Live, you will see Mr. Gary Frog Talbert here, councilman from District 2. We'll be talking with him in just a second. Good morning, Gary. Morning. <laughs> And uh, if you are listening to this later, we appreciate you listening or watching. Of course, we put the video and audio versions up as well. www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. They are free on that platform. If you ever uh, fall behind or want to catch up later in the day and don't have time to watch it live on Facebook, catch us there. Please do not watch and drive. We'd appreciate that. The news is on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We're also twice a week in print on uh, Thursdays and Saturdays. So we appreciate you checking us out there. Uh, Mr. Talbert and I both had to deal with the traffic on Hatchel Lane this morning. Normal school traffic as Denham Springs Elementary and Junior High try to get back set and uh, traffic on Highway 16 as well. Traffic on 16 North up in Watson as it looks like traffic is starting to flow south into the city now that, high, now that the high school is in session. Heavy delays on I-12 heading westbound all the way back to Jubin Road. <clears throat> Excuse me. And delays 190 Florida Boulevard and 4-H Club Road where they've come together. And some minor delays but not too bad on 64 heading into Central. It's currently 73 degrees. 93 degrees is your high today. 0% chance of rain. It's going to be a hot one this afternoon. Prepare yourselves for that. We have uh, just a few updates. The rest of our jamborees will be coming tonight. Keep an eye on William Weathers and Rob Yarman on Facebook and Twitter. They'll be bringing that to you. Uh, Denham lost their opening jamboree last night to Dutchtown 17-7. Uh, the comments from uh, Coach Kennedy is where he was a little befuddled by the performance. Uh, they'll be looking to get back to practice and, and fixing it up. Mr. Talbert is smiling. He is a Live Oak fan. Uh, <laughs> they will be they will be uh, hosting uh, their own jamboree tonight. I'm sure you'll be there. Uh, let, yesterday we had a second murder trial run through the parish. Uh, this time uh, we have a a guilty uh, plea of a second degree murder. This one was a uh, a pretty gruesome pretty gruesome scene. Uh, it was a, a murder and a dismemberment. Uh, it was a 12 to nothing vote. Uh, from the jury, uh, which means that Mr. Martin Morgan uh, will serve the rest of his life in prison uh, with no chance of parole. We also have a little bit of breaking news. If you are uh, in the Denham Springs area or areas around it, uh, look on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash breaking news. It's free. There is a gentleman who took advantage of a lady with Alzheimer's and convinced her that he had done work to her home uh, and then took her to Regions Bank in Denham Springs and got her to pay him uh, a quite a large sum of money and then dropped her back off at the house. She is elderly uh, and suffers from Alzheimer's, so she couldn't defend herself. Uh, please, uh, if you see the gentleman, look at the photos online. It's also on the Denham Springs uh, Police Department's Facebook page. We'd appreciate it. They are looking for the community's help. Now, for the reason that everyone is here, I am sure, or watching, or listening, uh, we are going to have a uh, brief little conversation with Mr. Gary Frog Talbert about what's going on at the Parish Council level, uh, and then he and I will take a quick break and jump into a long-form podcast, which you can check out later on our website. We mentioned the URL, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. Good morning again, sir. How are you? Morning. Good. Early. <laughs> it is early. Mr. Talbert was here on time. I was not. Uh, I had to drop a drop my stepson off at the high school, uh, wherein I sat in about a mile's worth of traffic, and then I sat in the other mile's worth of traffic on Hatchell. So I appreciate his timeliness. I was late. So uh, what pushed you into politics? You know, what when, when you were sitting there thinking about, I want to run for parish councilman, what was that thought process like? You know, I... I guess it, it goes back to you know my upbringing or whatever. You know, I was a, I was a preacher's kid, so okay. you know you know I mean, your parents seem to you know have a you know they seem to be servants of of, of other 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 individuals, you know, mm -hmm. and so they kind of have you kind of grow up with that mentality, and you know when you I went to work, started you know started my own business, and and you want to become involved in the community. So I just kind of started as a, as a member of, of the rec, it was a very great district too. And, and, you know, went from a, a member of that commit board to the chairman. And we, we did the park expansion at ballpark, at the ballpark out at Live Oak. And it just was a natural progression. You know, you, you, you serve your time there and, and then you, 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 you 
get out and you look at, you know, your community and figure out, you know, there's some needs and you've got some ideas that you think you can, you know, help make the community better. So that's kind of what brings you to that point. Civil service kind of thing. Right. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> we were, uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to twist you up a little bit here because there is one piece I want to talk about before we get into sort of, the, I, I would say, the first piece of legislation that you and uh, Mr. Keene jumped into. Uh, you know, right as y'all come in, you know, you've got, you've got about, seven and a half months under your belt and then it floods you know we're going to get into that in more detail in the podcast but give us you know a, a few sentences about what it was like to work with eight other guys you didn't really know that well at the time working through that kind of disaster you know it it was different for me you know i mean i've i've been my own boss for a long time mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking about so consequently ultimately you know I would, you know, I had a business partner in one business, another business I ran by myself, and, you know, we would discuss some things, but there was two of us, and he kind of had his area of expertise, and he dealt with it, and I had an area that I kind of dealt with, and I would inform him of what I was doing, and he would inform me of what he was doing, but, you know, we kind of all stayed in our lane, and then, then I'm on the council, and I've got ideas, but you've got to convince eight other people that what you want to do is the best thing, and it was, it was a struggle for me. Mm -hmm. because ultimately I, you know, I, I'm not a politician. And, and so consequently, you know, I, I guess some, sometimes in just, I didn't look at the big picture on certain items. I see something and I think, you know, this will make, you know, the community better. This will improve things and without looking at what is, what might be the impact four years from now or eight years from now, you right. know? And so, I looked at I looked at immediate solutions like you would at your business and and so consequently it, it took time for me to you know learn to or or to work within the group you know and and try to talk to people before you had an idea and you just presented it right so uh, talking about those ideas uh, you know one of the first ones that you and and, and Scooter Keen uh, came out with was term limits why you know. We're out campaigning. We we were fresh off, you know. We had, we were fresh off the campaign. We we get sworn in. Uh, that was one of the things people talked about. You know, there were there were a list of things, and term limits was one that you know it, that seemed to be at the forefront. Plus, when you went back and looked at the previous four years and looked at the Home Rule Charter Commission and some of the things that they came up with and stuff that the council chose to put on the ballot and chose not to put on ballot term limits was one of the things that came out of the Home Rule Charter Commission. So it was just something that people had asked for, people talked about, presented it. It was one of the issues that when we had gone to that council, the, the, the Chamber, of Com uh, Chamber of Commerce forum, that was one of the questions that was talked about. So it was something that seemed to be on people's mind at that point in time. So let's go ahead and get the legislation done, get it out of the way, because it was going to have to come before a vote of the people. So that's what we moved on. One of the first things we decided to do was just address something we knew people wanted and get it out of the way. Well, and that was, I guess you could say, a W for you. Uh, not long after that came sort of your first uh, first loss. Uh, you know, you, for that one, for that one particularly, you know, you you both you and, and Scooter said that it was something y'all heard on the campaign trail, uh, and we're talking about mosquito abatement. And you pulled out budgets, you pulled out town halls, you know, you had you had the whole logistical system of it set up, put it out for a vote, and there had to be two pieces of disappointment. One, it failed, but second, 13% turnout. Yeah, you know, we spent a lot of time on that. You know, there was a lot of effort put forth. Um, you know, I guess I really, I mean... I, when, when we first started talking about it, we talked about the fact that, that it had been voted down twice. We talked about that it was six years ago and the parish had really changed a lot in that, you know, that time. Right. Um, we talked about, you know, initially it was approved as a fee, you know, on a, to be collected as a utility, you know, on a utility bill uh, was how right. the voters had originally done it. So we tried to look at, you know, putting something forth that was similar to what was initially passed. We tried to address the concerns we had heard from people about the, the, the what they felt like were deficiencies in the previous program. Um, 
what we didn't account for was just the anti-tax movement. You know what I'm talking about? People sure. just don't, people just feel like they're taxed to death and that, you know, they don't want government providing those services. Even though there's a gentleman in my district that said, I can do this for myself for $5 a month, which is $2 more than he would have paid if right. he would have passed. But at the same time, you know, it was his decision where they wanted to spend the $5. It was his decision where they wanted to fall for mosquitoes. So consequently, you know, what we always said is we'd put it before a vote of the people and let them, you know, render the decision instead of in, instead of unilaterally imposing a fee. And they did. We were wrong. You know, we misread what, what people, what we thought the majority would want, but we moved on. Right. So, uh, and, and, and in talking about moving on, there'll be several things that we, uh, we will discuss in the long form podcast, but a couple of those were uh, things like dirt fill, sewer, and freeboard. Uh, I know that sewer dominated a lot of your time in ordinance after that. Uh, just real quick, you know, um, talk to us about the initial uh, discussions around sewer and, and what, what pushed you into uh, getting with Mr. Eddie Idell of, uh, everybody says his last name, uh, it just depends on what you, where your twang is, <laughs> uh, but Mr. Eddie Idell's um, expertise on the area, he works for Alvin Fairburn Associates. Well, you know, right after we got in office, we merged the two sewer districts in one and two to, to you know, create more financially stable entity that you know put forth a better balance sheet and financial statement and it's kind of paid off where you know the sewer district is moving to expansion uh but we still know that you know prior to the merger sewer two had paid a lot of money for a lot of package units that weren't in compliance right you know and so consequently it's not unusual to find a package unit out of compliance because they are they are small unit so consequently it doesn't take a lot to, to to get them out of whack so we just felt if we were going to try to clean up the waterways in Livingston Parish and address you know you know contaminated affluent that the parish itself needed to have some regulations to you know oversee those package units and don't leave it up to state we all drive down roads and you know, if you don't have your if you don't have your air conditioning on recycle, you know, and you're getting fresh air, you'll pass that ditch and you go, My goodness, what is that? That's most of the time that's sewer water. You know, right. it's 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 untreated fluid and we just need to address those issues within the parish. And we and we talked about it and and I think that there were some members on the committee that weren't real crazy about it, whether it was, you know, some of them are just anti government, you know, some of them are they might have had friends in that business and they didn't want to, you know, impact their deal. They kicked it to the, you know, master plan committee and it was going to die a slow death there. But, you know, I think we're going to get some time to address it, you know, sometime in 2020. And uh, it, it will be interesting to see where it ends up as uh, Mr. Gerlinghouse through, I guess you can say, a wrench in that whole master plan situation, uh, wherein... Um, he will be looking to introduce Envision Livingston, which was the 2013 version. We'll talk. He and I will talk a little bit more about that in the podcast. Yes, we're leaving y'all with a hook to listen to the podcast. Please listen. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the big sort of flashy things that's going on right now is the Premier Concrete issue, uh, and that would be the dormitory that was built on their campus uh, under the guise of a just about a year ago now, uh, almost a year to the day, uh, under the guise of, of a residential permit which ended up turning into a dormitory that could house 40, 46 people. Uh, so let's start with, let's start with that timeline, which you and I have both discussed. It, uh, it began with a residential permit last August and sort of ballooned from there into, uh, let, we can skip the first part because uh, we can get into 2019 because that was just them starting construct, well, laying dirt and starting construction. Once we got into March, it was brought to your attention. Uh, the next door neighbor, um, Mr. Muller was uh, a bit concerned because all of a sudden this building was com coming out of the ground. Take it away. Well, actually, he I, Steve had contacted me in February, and you know I had reached out to the council office. I said I gave him I gave him Premier's address. I said give me a list of permits they pulled recently, and there wasn't anything. So you know I rode to the front of the building, pulled up in the parking lot, didn't see anything. Just figured Steve was you know mistaken. I get a call from Steve March 9th uh, because there had been an incident that 
the, the previous evening where the sheriff's office had pulled a couple individuals over at Park Ridge subdivision. Mm -hmm. One of them had ran and sought refuge up in Premier Concrete. Uh, you know, he, he had some concerns about that. I reached out to the sheriff's office, got some information. And uh, sure enough, there were, you know, two individuals pulled over. One of them sought refuge in Premier Concrete. Um, one that was arrested didn't really belong in this country, didn't, you know, was here illegally. Right. They finally caught the other one in May in, in the uh, Springfield area, if, I'm, if memory Correct. serves me. Correct. And he, he was illegal and it was wanted on a murder charge in the country he was, you know, from. So uh, that would be Honduras. Honduras. So, you know, and, and to the best of my recollection, one, if not both of those, had been previous employees of Premier Country. Now, right. they were, we were told they were not employees at that time. They were just up visiting. But, but anyway, it, it brought some concern to the community. I, I, I went back up there, rode down an old gravel road that I had not ridden down previously and saw that big, massive building being built. Right. Reached out to the you know, parish planning office to figure out how this commercial building is being built in my district and we never had a you know never went through planning never had a site plan come with the council and that's when we realized that it was being built under the guise of a residential permit so you know i guess what the one thing i want to clarify is that that the permitting office the planning office really weren't negligent in what they did they were misled you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying the address was acquired with by misleading you know as to what was going there Plans were submitted and application filled out as it being residents, and that's why the residential permit was issued, and they and they were misled on that also. So, you know, we come to a point where we identify the problem. Um, they supposedly were supposed to stop work at that point in time. Fire marshal came out and did an inspection. There were, I think, 17 deficiencies at that point in time. And my understanding, and 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 that. They were, we were going to, you know, the fire marshal was going to get straight. We were going to get, and we were at the parish level going to get this done correctly. Um, so I figured, you know, we're going to get the sign. We're going to plan it. We're going to site plan the council. People of Watson get to speak their piece. Um, I think the administration took a different viewpoint of that meeting and said that, you know, fire marshal gets straight. We're going to let them move forward. When I realized that the permit had been issued, for a commercial building, that's when I brought it before the council. Because, you know, we ask people to trust government. Mm -hmm. You know, we ask them to, to, to pass taxes, you know, trust government. And then the one time that they have a voice where they can speak their mind about something they don't like, we take it away from them. And I think that's setting a bad precedent. Yeah. I think, I think you know, how do we ask people to renew an upcoming road tax when we won't, when we won't give them the option or the opportunity to speak on something that's clearly within the law, they have that opportunity to do. And that's my concern. It's not so much about what's being built, it's about the process. If we start changing the process, we start we, we quit letting our citizens have that opportunity to, to voice their complaints about what's going on in their community, then we're, we're, we're going down a bad road. And then secondly, it is about the law says you do it one way. And if we set this precedent that, you know, somebody comes in and misrepresents what's going on and then we just say, okay, we're just going to work around the rules and, and, and let you move forward. Why do you ever want to do it the right way? It's easier, you know, it's easier to ask. You've heard that say it's easier to ask forgiveness and permission yeah. if, if that's the precedent we're going to set. So, my concern about this is is more about the process and, and setting precedent. If the if the citizens of Watson don't like what's being built, they need the opportunity to speak about it. And and if and if we can establish that it, it it's you know not beneficial to the health, safety, and welfare of the community, then you know we'll try to do something as a council. But but at least give them the voice that they deserve. So uh, and this this process is still relatively ongoing because. Um, while Premier Concrete is, is working with the administration, um, you know, you're, you're pushing from your end, uh, as y'all sent a resolution, 5-4 vote, a little controversial, 
uh, but it passed. You sent it off to Parish President Leighton Ricks and didn't really get much of a response. However, uh, Mr. Keene has proposed, now it got tabled, uh, something, uh, an ordinance that would require those who uh, falsely acquire permits to restart the process. Uh, again, that got tabled. We'll see what happens at this next meeting. Uh, you have a opponent for District 2, which, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, District 2 uh, is currently one of the largest parish council districts in terms of population density. You're looking at uh, 7,481 homes uh, with a population of 22,287. Now, of course, we were both there at the parish council meeting uh, last Thursday, uh, wherein we heard the presentation from the Census Bureau. Please fill out your census. It's important. Uh, but you have a race. What are your feelings on it right now? I feel. I mean, I feel very confident. In it. I mean, look, I've I've represented the people of Watson as, as as well as they've probably been represented, you know, throughout you know the the the, the home rule charter period anyway um, since we've had the council. Um, I've uh, I've proposed legislation that, that that helps the people of Watson, that helps the whole parish. You know, I'm I'm course you represent your area first you know i'm looking out for the watson live oak area first but i'm looking out for the parish as a whole you know because we all exist together within this thing look i'm gonna i'm not gonna sit on my hands just be content to be the councilman mm -hmm. if if i'm not gonna be able to make my community better and and, and strive to move us toward the you know 21st century i'm uh I just soon stay home, go fishing, and tend to my business. You know sure. what I'm talking about? So, consequently, if you continue to push things that need to be addressed, you're going to aggravate people. I, my wife and I were talking the other night. I told her, I said, I've probably aggravated everybody in my district one or two times. But, you know, hopefully they look at the body of work, you know what I'm talking about, and, and realize that overall they might have disagreed with me on mosquito abatement. They might have disagreed on dirt fill. But overall, I think the job that, that I've proposed or the job that I've done and the things I've proposed have been beneficial to the parish, been beneficial to the district. I'm going to continue to be the person I am. I'm going to continue to strive to, if I see an issue, I see a problem, I'm going to try to meet it head on and, 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 and get it taken care of. So, you know, plus we're, we're coming to the time I love. It's, it, look, it's. We got a we got a football game tonight at Live Oak. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be out there early. Uh, we're gonna be you know we're gonna be cooking a little bit and and visiting and uh, it's just I'm looking forward to it. And that's gonna be a little hectic. You know tonight I got to get packed up and go home and pack a bag because we're gonna catch a plane tomorrow to go to to go watch my son play football in uh, at Kansas State. But uh, now he he's moved up the depth chart, hasn't he? Uh, right, he's number two. He's number two in the uh, at right guard. He's uh, he and they platoon a lot of guards at Nichols. You know, mm -hmm. they they tend to play the center and the two tackles on offense the whole game, but they run a lot of guards in and out based on the the, the style of offense they run. So they pull a lot. They do. They I, I put a video on Facebook the other day. He, I saw it. He he, he flattened <laughs> one of his teammates. He, I mean, so. Yeah, he's he's excited. He's he's worked really hard, you know, and to get where he is, and 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 I think he's excited. Uh, they're flying out today. Mm -hmm. uh, we rode down there uh, Wednesday night, took him out to dinner. We actually, my wife actually went to go watch a little young lady from Watson that that went to Live Oak to play soccer. She's she's a, a freshman at Nichols, mm -hmm. and she went she went to watch her play. The game rank got rained out, but I had some I had some meetings I had to attend early that day. And but when it was over with, I rode down there. We we took Jacoby out and had dinner, and it was a nice little deal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to at least seeing him when the game's over Saturday. I don't I'm not gonna get there early enough probably to see him ahead of time, but uh, we'll be in the stands. We got tickets behind the Nichols bench. I don't know four or five rows up. It ought to be a it ought to be a fun time, and then hopefully we'll get to visit with him after the game, and then. I think they fly out after the game that night. And That's how we do. Yeah, and then we've got a game. And then, we, you know, of course, I wasn't sure whether I was or wasn't going initially. And then after I watched the second scrimmage and realized that he was really doing well and, you know, I thought that he was he was, he was, was clearly starting with the twos and, and getting subbed in with the ones in situations that 
you know, we bought tickets on the ride home from, from Nichols that Saturday. So we're going to fly home a little late Sunday, but it'll be okay. It'll be worth it. Well, and good luck to him. Uh, he was a great, he was a great, piece of the puzzle for Live Oak. And I know that uh, they'll be looking for guys to, to fill those shoes. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do tonight with Denham kind of leading it off, uh, as we discussed, not with the performance they wanted. Last question before we wrap up the uh, morning show. Uh, you know, you you talked about your race, you're feeling comfortable, which means uh, should you win coming in the spring, you there's, there's a big thing on the ballot, and that is the one cent sales tax for uh, which goes to DPW roads now a quarter so 25% of that one cent which is always fun to say people get confused um, goes towards the jail right so talk to us uh, you know what are your thoughts on that on that one cent sales tax you know look if it's put on the ballot as it's written now I'm gonna have a hard time supporting it um, and, and and I'll be quite honest with you. I think that I think that people need to know exactly where their dollars are going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, DPW is wholly funded out of that out of that sales tax and that five mills that we have. You know, for road repair. So let's be honest. About seven million dollars of that money is going into the DPW budget. You right. know, to, to to wholly fund DPW. Um, portion of that money is going to pay bonds from back in the day when the tax was originally passed and we overlaid to use somebody's term from you know 10 12 years ago we overlaid a bunch of pig trail you know what i'm talking about <laughs> Sarah Farla. but anyway we're paying we're paying back on those bonds and that and that pays off what in 2021 or yes. something like that but i so think a year after this renewal, right after the renewal and, and the and the tax even if it fails in 2020 mm -hmm. it's an early look at it so that you know, if there's a rejection, you've got time to analyze what the problems were. Here's my thought process. You know, we're receiving X number of dollars. Some percentage of that is funding DPW. Mm -hmm. Some percentage of that is paying bond money off. Some percentage of that we've been putting down in, in road repair. You know, new overlays and stuff along those lines. I think we need to earmark that money. I think we need to, to, to let the people know... You know, X percentage of this revenue is going to fund DPW, and DPW is going to live within that budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether we have MPO money coming for, you know, future construction or repair, whether we've got bridges on the state bridge program that we're doing, we've got to have match. I think we've got to allocate some portion of that money, you know, for match on, on state projects that we know that are going to be funded. And then some portion, we need to tell the people we're going to put X number of dollars on on road repair, you know, new asphalt on defective roads every year, mm -hmm. and 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 just let them know this is where your money is going to be spent. What we what we don't need to do is say we're going to take three quarters of that and spend it the best way we can spend it. I think we need to tell them how we're going to spend it, so they'll be more comfortable. And, and pulling the, the the yes lever on that on that on that tax. So far as the jail tax, you know, nobody likes to pay for a jail, but the way the the way the state constitution is written, that's our responsibility. Right. And and I think right now, if you probably went and looked at jail fund, there's probably about a nine million dollar deficit in that thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be imperative that that quarter cent tax pay because. You know, people are going to say, well, the bond on the jail is going to pay off pretty soon. Well, let me tell you something. Our jail is undersized today. Mm -hmm. You know, so so we're going to have to look to the future to solve some of these problems. And and if we if we don't look to solve some of the future problems that we're going to have, the jail is going to be one of those things in the budget that bites you and bites you hard and you're going to struggle with. And so, you know, I think that it's imperative that those taxes are passed, but but if the three quarters of a percent sales tax for roads is put forth without any earmarking or any designation of how the money's going to be spent, I'm going to have a hard time supporting it. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, that, that vote will be coming up in the spring. Still got a full ballot to worry about in the fall. We'll be talking more with Mr. Talbert in depth about a lot of these subjects. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the NFIP, which I'm sure will be fun and all sorts of fireworks. Again, there's the hook. Please listen to the podcast. 
Thank you, sir, for being here this morning on uh, our morning show. We appreciate it. One more, one more look at your traffic situation. Mr. Tower and I have talked for a solid 30 minutes. Uh, and therefore, traffic has actually, this time, this morning, I get to tell you, has pretty much cleared up. Minor delays at Sherwood heading westbound on I-12. Uh, otherwise, you're pretty clear for your commute into Baton Rouge if you left a little late this morning. It's currently 73 degrees still. Uh, I can tell you all that this uh, our traffic and weather are brought to you by WGMB Fox 44 and NBC WVLA 33, which is BRProud.com. They are run by Nexstar, who solved their issue with AT&T and UVerse. So if you were worried about not being able to see the Saints as a customer of theirs, you will now. You got a high of 93 today, 0% chance of rain. Once again, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. We appreciate you being here, Mr. Talbert. He and I are going to take a short break, and then we're going to jump into the long-form podcast. Please remember that you can find these shows, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. You can also find our long-form podcast there. We give you audio and video versions. I do recommend uh, my heavily edited baritone voice. It's It sounds great. Plus, you can drive and listen to it as well. Uh, we will be back here shortly. Thank you, and we hope you have a great day.